folks. We're all from New York here? Yeah. I have that effect on people. I got it, I got it, I got it. It was me, there's a button and I put the button down. That's my thing. So are we all from New York here? Everybody here from New York? Anybody from out of state? Fuck them, right? Yeah, we don't want them here anyway. Fuck them. New York has some type of confidence about it, though, and each part has, like, its own unique confidence. Like, Long Island, it's unmatched. Like, you're up against, like, the big city, and you still don't give a fuck. You're like, we could be our own fucking state. We could do that. And everybody else is like, they could do that? But you need Brooklyn and Queens. That's the kicker. You need us. I'm from Brooklyn. Hey. I wasn't too worried about it. I wasn't too worried about it. There's a lot of foreigners in Brooklyn, and I don't mean this in an insulting way. But we're talking about confidence. Like, foreigners, they have an unmatched confidence as well. Have you ever seen a foreigner just do a snot rocket in the middle of the night? <laughs> Chest high. No, they don't give a fuck. I almost want to do it, too. I'm like, I wish I had a booger right now. I'm, you know, I'd do it, too, man. No, it's unmatched. Like, I don't know, you, out in Long Island, like, there's not really a Hasidic Jewish population really out here, but in Brooklyn we have one. Chanel was talking about Borough Park, Brooklyn. This is, a very unique, this is a very unique part of Brooklyn because it's a Hasidic Jewish population. They're not foreigners. They're from here. But they are unmatched in their confidence. You can see a five-year-old pushing a carriage with a newborn holding a premature baby. <laughs> Swear to God. The problem is, they're crossing against the light. They don't give a fuck. The kid's got a wig on for some reason. But they're so confident. You're like, how? How are they so confident? I'll tell you how. You might not know this, but in the Hasidic Jewish community, when there is circumcision done, there's a doctor called a moil, and he's the, you know, he's the snipper. But after he snips, he sucks the baby's penis. Look it up, it's real, I swear to God. The New York State Department of Health says it does not recommend this, but it cannot stop it because it's religious practice. I think they should recommend it to more people. <laughs> listen, listen. If I got my dick sucked when I was a baby, I would not have social anxiety. <laughs> Come on. Are you kidding me? Fantastic. Anyway, we were talking about relationships before, but I'm, I'm a little attention to this episode. Have we got single people in the crowd? Everybody's in a fucking relationship here. You're all just, oh, fuck you guys. Well, how did you guys meet? Or oh, did you, anybody single you out yet? Ah, uh, I'll give you a break. I'll give you a break. Yeah, it's tough. I know you didn't probably choose that either. You guys got singled out yet? How did you guys meet? Tell us the love story. Mutual friends. Mutual friends, the classic. That's great. Not a lot of people have that classic story anymore. A lot of people using dating apps, they got horror stories. I'm sure you felt really lucky when you met each other. Very lucky, that's so sweet. I'm gonna tell you, not everybody's got the same life, okay? <laughs> Alright? Not all that lucky. Now, I met a girl, she's great, and I'm happy now, but before I met her, it got tricky. The apps get tricky. You meet people. I thought guys were the ones who were supposed to be disasters on the dating apps. That's how these chicks make it seem. Oh, these guys, these guys. Girls. You go to this girl's house. I brought Chinese food. Open the Chinese food. All I could smell was kitty litter. Yeah, ladies, you're not perfect either. I don't know how you walk in and out of your house every day and you're just like smelling the pheromones of ammonia every day and it doesn't bother you. But it's okay, but it's okay. Women aren't perfect, men aren't perfect, I get it. I met this girl on a dating app. She was like, listen, if we have sex, we have to do it doggy stop, because we have to disassociate. I was like, holy shit. I started disassociating right then and there. I was like, what kind of fucking trauma has this girl had in her life that she needs to say this when she meets somebody? Oh my God. But the dating apps get tricky, man. The internet, it's tricky. Has anybody ever been scammed before? No? You, you've been scammed? No. It's not shocking. Real quick, before you get to that, has anyone ever played the lotto? You've been fucking scammed. Has anybody in here ever voted? You've been fucking scammed. How'd you get scammed? Do you mind telling us how you got scammed? Talk to me. Internet? 
much. Pretty much an internet scam. Was it a like a rich prince who needed to get off an island or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, it was a girl. Talk to me. I I think this is gonna. She didn't tell you she was married, but she told you she needed money. She didn't hit you up for money, so you only got scammed for your heart. We hope so, because if she has your social security number, it's a bigger problem. Than you can have. She's the one who scammed you? Oh. Okay, hey, folks, call somebody. Get them over here. Oh, hold them down. No, okay, okay, that's fair. I, I respect that. That's not that bad. I know somebody who didn't have it as good as you in that sense of things. You got a better one? Are you guys ready for a better one? I wasn't pre I wasn't prepared for that one. Not I got I wrote shit down. I wrote nothing for that one. Sorry about that one. She seems great. I don't know. Third time's a charm. That's fucking awesome. I know somebody who's on a dating app called Hinge. And like Hinge is supposed to be like one of the good ones. Like the people really want to find true love on these dating apps. And I know somebody, they did the same thing. They got on the dating app and they were looking for true sex, like right away. But they were swiping and they matched with somebody. 19 year old girl, very pretty, start having a cool conversation. Things get tricky for my friend here. And I just make it a little interactive. My friend gets scammed for $15,000. Yep, you think your heart is worth something? 15000 is a lot. A lot. Honestly, I can't even judge him because it's like, I was excited when I found $15 in my laundry the other day. I'm like, Jesus Christ, $15,000. I don't even make numbers like that up. So you guys, I want you to just yell out when you think this is a scam. I want to see, because you know, most of you haven't been scammed before. So he swipes, she starts talking to him, a little sexy talk, she sends him a nude first. Damn, I've never been sent a nude first. Dick pic is collateral. <laughs> dick pic boobies, you know? Dick pic with my diploma. <laughs> No, yeah, no. So he said, he reciprocates. Conversation ends naturally. Wakes up in the next morning and it's like, it's a sheriff on the phone. He's like, that 19 year old girl you were talking to? 15 years old. Oh. Not good. He said, but I would have you arrested instantly, but the parents want to actually speak to you. No scam yet, yeah. you guys better keep your phones on silent. They're gonna get you. So he, he says, Yeah, of course, I'll talk to them. He gets into, into contact with the father, and the father says, Hey, dirtbag. Of course. When I saw your dick on my daughter's phone, she tried to kill herself. Got a little whisper of a scam over here, a little whisper of a scam. Absolutely. Nobody else thinks it's a scam at this point? Are we un starting to unanimously agree? Okay, cool. My friend, not so much. Okay. So he's like, okay, calm down. Let me know what's up. I'll come to the hospital. No, 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 don't come to the hospital. You gotta pay for these medical bills. We don't have insurance. How would you guys pay for medical bills? How would you guys pay for medical bills? Health insurance, right? Like worst worst case scenario, a credit card or something. It's actually uh, gift cards, PayPal, wire transfers. Yeah, you need I need five thousand dollars worth of iTunes gift cards, or my daughter's gonna die. But again, like we're not judging my friend here, you know? Like I helped him get out of the situation, just being like, hey buddy, this is a scam. We're not judging him. Because remember, in this whole scenario, I'm not, 15 grand is like an unbelievable amount of money to me. $15 was what I was excited for in my laundry. <laughs> See, like, when I was growing up, like, I'm not here to judge these. When I was growing up, I used to just want to be in the army all the time. So much so that when I was in eighth grade, I missed, like, picture day, and they put occupation for what I wanted to be, and they put army soldier. Mmm, army soldier. There was, like, general and, like, other ranks. They were like, nah, this guy's front line. He's gonna be the dude with the drums at the front of that shit. <laughs> but I've, like, grown into a person who looks like he, like, protests the war now. That's my vibe. And it, I don't care. Whatever you are, 
It doesn't bother me. You could you could walk up to me on the street and be like, you know who I think the most athletic president of all time is? And I'm like, the black guy? And you're like, no, it's actually Joe Biden. He should represent America in the Tour de France. I think Super gonna ride in a bike suit. I'm not gonna disagree with you, because then we're gonna argue and talk. Have you ever argued with somebody and been like, this was a super constructive conversation. We both came out of this better. Absolutely not. Never happened. I'm gonna yes you to death. You can come up to me right now in this room. Be like, I fucking hate white people. Be like, those crackers right there. <laughs> Probably be the Arab dude who doesn't say he's Arab. You just like fucking white people. I bet. I bet. No, I get. White guy comes up to me right now, says he doesn't like black people. I look around, make sure there's no fucking black people around. I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'm too <laughs> Whatever you are, I am. I look at it like this. I get nervous for the wrong reasons when it comes to comedy. Good comics, they come up here, they're worried about telling their jokes right, making sure they're landing punchlines, timing's right. I'm worried about, should I pee before I get on stage? Should I empty this tank? And then it's like, I'm waiting online, and it's, it's cool. You just start to listen to people, hear two people arguing about like who pooped in Johnny Depp's bed. <laughs> it's like, whoever disagreed first, they're in the wrong. Because they're the person who kept that conversation going. Just agree. Just agree. Oh yeah, I think the dog did too. But once I get into the bathroom, it's like another issue. It's like now I inherited someone's piss all over the toilet seat. It's a fucking war zone in here. Like once there's piss on the toilet seat, it's yours now. Nobody behind you knows there was piss on I literally like become a janitor for like three minutes when I walk into a bathroom because I'm just like, this is a mess. They're gonna fuck. I piss, I clean it up, and then and then we're good. Then I get to the sink and like it's always this question of like, is there hot water? Is this thing gonna just explode right towards me, make me look like I pissed everywhere? But I've been doing comedy long enough that like I come prepared. I wore black pants, anything splashes on them, nobody sees what I did. And I just want you to leave here with one thing. Black pants matter, guys. I'm <laughs>